Hello! Today I'm going to show you how to use Monster Mash, the demo. Uh, what is this What is this technology? It's actually a browser-based uh, 3D program. It actually takes 2D images and it, it, it shapes them. It actually turns them into 3D objects. Um, and that's what we see right here. I just took a couple pictures and I'm going to show you <clears throat> and walk you right through this whole process. Super easy, completely free, and you don't have to download anything. This is actually really nifty. So we're going to go ahead and check this out. Um, just stay along with me. All right. So uh, we're going to start out on Google, actually. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to do this um, just from start to finish. First thing I start with is just a couple pictures. So I'm just going to take a couple pictures from the internet, and we're going to um, turn them into something kind of cool. So the first thing I'm going to look up is the background. So you have to have a background uh, image. So I'm just going to type in the word space. And I'm going to head over to images, Google images. And I'm going to want to make sure that this is a PNG or a, um, a PNG or a JPEG or something like that. So right now I'm just picking a random image. Um, uh, I'm going to make sure it's, it's going to be a Hubble, a Hubble image. Um, there we go. A Hubble image. The uh, reason why is because they're not uh, copyrighted or anything like that. So that's totally fine. So let's see if I can take this one. Um, looks fair sized. I think I want to get a bigger one. If you ever want to just do that, you can always click on tools, I believe. And the size, and you want to just make them large. Just so you get the, the highest resolution you can possibly find. Oh, cool. Um, so this is what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and click on this picture over here. And I think this is an image. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to save image as. And we can see that it's a JPEG image. I'm using a PC. Um, so we can see this is a JPEG image. I'm just going to call it something. I'm just going to call it space background, like so. And I'm just going to save that. And I'm going to take this picture of the Hubble telescope right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and click that. And I'm going to save this image as. And I'm just going to call this one Hubble. And I'm going to save that. All right, so now we're going to navigate to the website. So what we're looking for is Monster Mash, a new sketch-based modeling and animation tool, uh, April 2021. So this is a brand new uh, technology that has just come out, and there's not too much about it. I'm just making kind of a tutorial on this. So um, it's uh, monstermash.zone. That's the website. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. I'm going to put the link in the description. Um, there's a bit of a loading screen, and you show up here. So they call this a demo. Um, so this is a demo for right now. I don't know if this is uh, for real. There's like a little help section that comes up and um, there's some extra things here. Um, nodes and stuff. Um, all right. So uh, first thing that we do or first thing I usually do is I click on this little arrow up here. And you can see that at the top, there's just sort of a bar and there's not many things to click on. So this is super easy to use. Uh, I'm going to click on this little arrow and this open file. And the first thing I'm going to do is import a background image. So I'm going to go ahead and import a background image, and I'm going to go to my desktop. And I'm going to go for that sort of uh, space background that I chose. I'm going to click Open. And you can see that nothing has shown up yet. Um, it'll show up in a few seconds, so we'll just keep going with this. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this little arrow and click on Import Template Image. So this is the image that's going to be on my foreground. So I'm going to pick Hubble. I'm going to pick my Hubble Space Telescope like so. So you can see that the picture is um, has, has a bit of cloudiness over it. Um, it doesn't look like it's true color, the one that we saw on Google. And the reason that is, is because it's prompting us to sort of cut it out. Um, so let's do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to click and I'm going to hold down my mouse and sort of uh, try to draw as best as I as I can, really, but it doesn't really matter. I can do some some funky stuff if I want to add some extra. So I'll show us what that looks like. So right here, I'm just going to go off and do a giant squiggly area. I'm going to come back, sort of fill this area, and do kind of like a little node thing kind of coming off there. That's totally fine. It doesn't matter. We're not looking for perfection here. Um, I'm just going to do this, and I'm just going to go a little loosey-goosey. I'm going to do another one of those little squigglies out here, and still holding down my mouse. I'm just drawing with it. I believe you can let go and pick up and draw again, but you you might get a few artifacts that way. Um, and by artifacts, I just mean just issues that happen, image issues. There we go. Um, it brightens up a bit. 
uh, when I close it off, so that's totally fine. And we're ready for the next step, actually, so not not too bad. At the top, these are the steps. Uh, there's step one, which is draw, and that's exactly what we just did. We just drew. Uh, step two is inflate, so we just click on this button, and we get a 3D model. Um, so this is really neat. Uh, what you're able to turn a flat image into a 3D model. And uh, one of the things that kind of came up was someone said that uh, that you can actually uh, see the the sort of uh, the mirror image of the object. So that's what it is. So the background is the mirror image of the object. So um, if you have text, um, it's going to be backwards on the back side of your object. Um, but it's pretty nifty. You actually get an object that flies in space. Um, and you can actually move it around. So what's cool about this is um, I'm using a mouse right now. And I'm uh, doing a left click. I'm using my left click to uh, grab and move my object. And you can see it's kind of floppy. It kind of moves around a little bit. Um, to spin it around, you can actually click on your middle mouse button. And you can... Uh, sort of uh, move your object around, sort of rotate it. Um, if you don't have that available, you can actually go to the top and click on this sort of gyroscope object. So I'll click on that, and I can use my uh, my mouse to uh, rotate the object. If I let go of that, um, then I can just move my object. So that's the only uh, thing that you need if you're using maybe like a trackpad or uh, you don't uh, use your middle mouse button, really. Um, you can just click this gyroscope to rotate. Uh, you can let go of that, and you can just position your uh, newly made 3D model. Um, so this is pretty cool. Um, this is really nifty, and that's about it. There's not too much to this uh, sort of um, software here, or application, I mean. Um, so at this point, you can actually click the download button. That's what this button is. It's like an arrow pointing into a sort of empty container. And you get a few options. You can save your project. Um, you can export a template for texturing. I don't know what that is, but maybe it's just coloring uh, the object a bit. I haven't really messed around with that. Um, but you can also save the current animation as an OBJ file. So when I do that, I'll click that, um, you get a PNG file, which is a picture. So that picture is this. <laughs> Sorry about that. I've got a, uh, my neighbor's dog gets pretty excited when uh, things happen. <laughs> that's always, that's understandable though. <laughs> All right. Um, so you get a PNG and, uh, what that PNG is, is just a picture of what you see on the screen. I'm just going to click cancel. We don't have to keep that. Um, but you also get an MTL file. Um, you can see that this is something you can actually bring into Blender if you wanted to. So this is actually really, really helpful. So you can actually take this and put it into a different uh, 3D modeling software. The last thing you get is a uh, OBJ file. Again, you can, this is potentially something you can bring into a game engine or um, what have you, anything, uh, Blender or something like that if you like. Um, so this is really nifty. It's actually something really cool. All right. Um, for the last sort of thing that I'll show us is, um, so you can save from here, but you can actually click three. You can actually click this animate button. Um, how does that work though? Essentially, uh, you drop a node when you click. So I just clicked with my mouse. You drop a node and um, it's kind of weird. It's kind of like if you can think of like potentially like sock puppets or something, like maybe something that's being controlled by strings. Um, it, I drop this little red node in the in the middle, in the center here. Um, if I click this record button, you'll see that these are no longer gray. If I click the record button, I can drag and, and potentially move um, elements on here. So you have to do this for every sort of... Um, node that you've put down. So I can press pause and record. And for this red one, I'm just going to move it this way. And we can see that it's beginning to stretch and contort my shapes like that. Um, you can see that it's kind of moving. It looks like it's kind of weaving and it's falling back down. There's a bit of gravity that's added to it. So it looks pretty cool. And we can keyframe these uh, sort of animations here. Um, that's pretty neat. I think it's kind of cool. Um, you can, of course, click the record button first and then click on an element. Um, you can do it a little backwards. Of course, I'm just doing it one way. You can experiment any other sort of way, but you can begin to stretch and contort your 3D object. Of course, these nodes won't show up at the end. Um, but if you do uh, click this button, um, export as animation or a GLB file, a GLTF file, will actually be available for you to download um, after you've made your animation. So that's like the last sort of portion. 
I think this is cool. There's a lot of elements. Um, if you want to click on some of these to remove the pins to see what your animation looks like, um, it's there. Um, if you want to remove shading, you could do that. Um, of course, I'm going to leave it. It looks a little more real, but depending on if you have like a dark object or something like that, um, you can show the background image or not. You can show the foreground image or not. Um, this seems to be the mesh if we take a look at that. Um, but this is awesome. I think this is something that's really cool. Um, you can check out other settings if you'd like. You can see that there's like a couple of things going on. I can potentially take off like smoothing or any of that, but it doesn't really matter. Um, but Pretty cool. I think this is a really cool and neat application that um, that could be used in education. This could be a very simple animation project for for youngsters um, or just for someone who's just getting into it. Like if this is something that like you just don't know a lot about like 3D design and maybe you want to get into it and maybe you want to begin to make files um, and you don't know how to scan something. Maybe you, you don't you don't want to get into the whole process of uh, photogrammetry or whatever it's called. You know, the super complicated taking pictures. It's going to take hours for nothing sort of software, that sort of thing. Um, this is something that's really approachable and easy to do. So I think this is totally worth trying. Um, and I'll go ahead and post the link uh, under there. Um, thank you so much. <laughs> watching and have a wonderful day.